Hello everyone. So this video is all about uh, explaining toxic effects of alcohol. So as you all know, in a chronic alcoholic, there will be a variety of metabolic changes that are going on giving rise to different clinical signs and symptoms, especially the laboratory signs that we are going to concentrate here. So the alcoholics, chronic alcoholics, they can get into hypoglycemia, frequent hypoglycemia, or they can get into hyperglycemia. These patients, these people, they can get, get into ketoacidosis, lactic acidosis, they can get into hyperuricemia. So all these varieties of effect like and also they can get into hyperlipidemia. So I'm going to explain you what exactly is the biochemical mechanism for all the laboratory signs that you are going to see in chronic alcoholics. Let's begin with the metabolism of alcohol first. So we have ethanol here. So ethanol is converted to acetaldehyde by alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme. And especially this will be going on in this cytoplasm. So where you need NAD plus and NAD plus is converted to NADH plus H plus. So when the metabolism of alcohol is going on, so you are producing a lot of NADH plus H plus in the cytoplasm and you are consuming all these NAD plus. So there will be shortage of NAD plus in the cytoplasm and more NADH plus H plus in the matrix of mitochondria. Now once you get, sorry, in the cytoplasm, once you get acetaldehyde, acetaldehyde gets down into the mitochondrial matrix and in the mitochondrial matrix, this acetaldehyde, it will be converted to acetate. So what all these reactions that I wrote here, these are all going on in the mitochondrial matrix. This is what is the mitochondrial matrix. Acetaldehyde is converted to acetate by acetaldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme. Again, it is going to consume NAD plus and release NADH plus H plus. Again, so it means you have produced NADH plus H plus but consumed NAD plus for that. So there will be plenty of NADH plus H plus in the mitochondrial matrix when alcohol is undergoing metabolism. Now what is the effect of this raised NADH plus H plus here? So there is a lot of NADH plus H plus coming from this side. So producing acetate. So acetate, it's a non-toxic molecule. It will be secreted into the blood. So there will be blood levels of acetate increases and that can decrease a pH of the blood. Now, what is the effect of raised NADH plus H plus? So in the TCA cycles, there are three enzymes which are having a negative effect by excess levels of NADH plus H plus and that is isocitrate dehydrogenase, alpha ketoglutrate dehydrogenase complex and malate dehydrogenase. Because of this, TCA cycle slows down. So because there are plenty of NADH plus H plus, so one of the TCA cycle reaction that is malate into oxaloacetate that's a TCA cycle reaction so what happens here because you have plenty of NADH plus H plus in the matrix of mitochondria so oxaloacetate in fact will go into malate side so there will be reversal of reaction just to regenerate NAD plus because this reaction if you reverse it you are going to regenerate NAD plus that's why oxaloacetate will go down into malate formation and this malate it can move out of mitochondria, can move out of mitochondria and come into cytoplasm. Malate can come into cytoplasm and in the cytoplasm, malate can be converted back into pyruvate. That is done by malic enzyme. Malic enzyme can convert malate into pyruvate and producing NADPH plus H plus. Okay. So that's how you can bring it back to pyruvate, but pyruvate will have other fate. We are going to look into that soon. Now, with the decrease in TCA cycle and less availability of oxaloacetate here, so your acetyl-CoA builds up because you have decreased TCA cycle. So the acetyl-CoA which is coming, coming from some of the pyruvate, as you might, be, uh, might have studied already, some of the pyruvates, if they can get into on the pyruvate can go into mitochondrial matrix and make acetyl-CoA. So, but acetyl-CoA is not con completely consumed here. So, acetyl-CoA, some of it is diverted into ketone bodies. So, that's why these ketone bodies are secreted into the blood and that can give rise to drop in the pH, blood pH. And that, that, that is basically ketoacidosis. So, it can give rise to ketoacidosis. So ketoacidosis is one of the signs that can be seen in chronic alcoholics. 
Now, when a person is in fasting condition, when the alcoholic person, when he takes alcohol but doesn't take food, or when he gets in, whenever he gets into fasting condition, during that time what happens, as you all know, is the fasting hormone is glucagon. So glucagon levels will be increased. And this glucagon, what it does, it is going to activate hormone-sensitive lipase enzyme. So the hormone-sensitive lipase, it is going to cause adipose tissue lipolysis. So adipose tissue lipolysis release free fatty acids into the blood. So most of the time these free fatty acids they will be carried to the liver because you know gluconeogenesis is all these reactions but all alcohol metabolism is going on in the liver. So free fatty acids are also taken to the liver. So the most common fate of these free fatty acids under fasting condition is to get into the mitochondrial matrix and undergo beta oxidation to release acetylcholine. That process is also affected in alcoholics. Why? Because alcohol metabolism has consumed these NAD+, both in the cytoplasm and also in the mitochondria, and it has produced too much of NADH. So it's problem of too much of NADH and too less of NAD+. Because of this, what happens? Even beta oxidation also needs NAD+, NAD plus here. As you can see, one of the reaction, that is beta hydroxyacylcoa dehydrogenase enzyme in the beta oxidation, it's, it needs NAD plus and it releases NADH plus H plus. So it means you simply don't have you know, much of NAD plus left here. That is why fatty acyl coas completely do not undergo beta oxidation. So fatty acyl coa levels will just rise in the cytoplasm itself. And some of these fatty acyl coas now, they will be diverted into smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, you have glycerol 3 phosphate. So the glycerol 3 phosphate combines with fatty acyl CoA to make triacyl glycerol. So esterification is going on in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of hepatocytes. So because of this esterification, you are building tags here. So once you build a tags, so tags in the hepatocytes can be added on to ApoB100. You have in the hepatocyte, you have ApoB100 here. So tax will be loaded on to APOB100 and that will make VLDL. So initially VLDL will be secreted into the blood. So it will get into the blood and there will be increase in VLDL levels in the blood. And excess VLDL levels in the blood will give rise to hyperlipidemia. There will be hyperlipidemia. Hyperlipidemia will be present in chronic alcoholics. What kind of hyperlipidemia? There is increase in VLDL, so VLDL is rich in triacylglycerol. So the kind of hyperlipidemia that you see here is a hypertriacylglycerolemia. Okay? Now, as this goes on, at some point in time, your acetaldehyde, it's a toxic molecule. Acetaldehyde is a toxic molecule, so what it does, it is going to have a effect on secretory mechanism, it's going to inhibit secretory mechanism because that's acetaldehyde is a toxic molecule there. So secretory mechanism will be inhibited. That means your triglycerides, means VLDL will just accumulate in the hepatocyte itself. And later on, even there will be shortage of ApoB100 in the hepatocyte and that will give rise to accumulation of tax in the hepatocyte itself. Because of these two things, what happens combinedly, that is tax are accumulated Tag, uh, and also VLDLs are not secreted in, from the hepatocytes. So hepatocytes start accumulating all these molecules within its cell itself. And that will give rise to fatty steatosis. Fatty steatosis. Fatty steatosis or fatty liver, alcoholic fatty liver. That's what is fatty steatosis. And that's because of alcohol. We can call this as alcoholic fatty liver. So this alcoholic fatty liver, as the uh, as this issue continues, it can progress into cirrhosis. Cirrhosis can progress into hepatic encephalopathy, and that can give rise to coma and ultimately death in that particular patient. And that's what happens here. So initially hyperlipidemia, later going into fatty steatosis. Now, how did you get glycerol 3 phosphate to make triacyl glycerol? There's a reason for this. Why? So the dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which is coming from pyruvate, uh, sorry, the uh, glycolysis, which is giving you dry, dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So this dihydroxyacetone phosphate will be diverted into glycerol 3 phosphate. Normally under fasting condition, glycerol will be converted 
glycerol is converted into glycerol 3 phosphate and glycerol 3 phosphate has to go into dihydroxyacetone phosphate and that has to go into glucose formation. That should be the normal route to maintain blood glucose level but that does not happen in alcoholics. Why? Because you have plenty of NADH in the cytoplasm and less NAD plus. So it means this will be an opportunity for a cell to regenerate NAD plus. That is why what it does, it is going to take DHAP into glycerol DH. The flux of the reaction is to make uh, glycerol, sorry, glycerol 3 phosphate. So DHAP is converted to glycerol 3 phosphate and where NADH is used, NAD plus is released. So it has regenerated some NAD plus. That is why DHAP is going into glycerol 3 phosphate rather than glycerol 3 phosphate going into DHAP for gluconeogenesis. That doesn't, that decreases. That's how you get glycerol 3 phosphate. It should combine with fatty acid to make triacyl glycerol. So it means effectively you did not convert glycerol into glucose. Okay. Now on the other side, when the person is in fasting condition, starvation, skeletal muscle proteolysis will go on and that will release alanine. Alanine is taken into the liver and transamination is going on and that will make pyruvate. But pyruvate has to go into glucose but that process will be decreased. Why? Because simply we have plenty of NADH plus H plus in the cytoplasm. So it means your pyruvate is diverted into lactate formation rather than putting that into gluconeogenesis. Why? Because pyruvate into lactate, it needs NADH plus H plus and you have plenty of NADH plus H plus. Lactate dehydrogenase is going to convert pyruvate into lactate using that NADH plus H plus and regenerating NAD plus. So, simply you have too much NADH plus H plus coming from alcohol and those are used here. That is why more of the pyruvate will go towards lactate formation. So, lactate builds up. And that can give rise to lactic acidosis. Now, what is the effect of this lactic acidosis? Lactic acidosis, so it can decrease the blood pH. So, that can contribute to metabolic acidosis because we have seen acetate building up in the blood, keto and ketones building up in the blood, both of them have decreased blood pH. And also now lactate builds up in the blood, giving the decrease in blood pH. So, overall, Alcoholic person, they may have metabolic acidosis because of excess of acetate, ketones and lactate. Now, what is the other effect of lactate? So, purines, normally purines will undergo degradation and they will form uric acid. Now, uric acid has to be secreted into the urine by renal tubular secretion. Now, whenever you have plenty of uric, lactic acid or lactate, so lactate is going to interfere with this uric acid secretion mechanism. So, because they both share the same secretory mechanism, so lactic acid interfering with the uric acid, so uric acid is not secreted completely, so uric acid builds up and that will appear in the blood giving rise to hyperuricemia. So, there will be hyperuricemia and this hyperuricemia can give rise to gout, manifestation of gout in alcoholics. So, we will have hyperuricemia giving rise to gout. That is one of the signs seen in alcoholic, chronic alcoholism. Now, since glycerol is not converted to glucose because it is glycerol 3 phosphate is going into uh, esterification, alanine is going into pyruvate, but pyruvate is not converted to glucose because pyruvate is diverted into lactate, and of course, lactate is anyway not going into pyruvate here. So, all these three gluconeogenic. Precursor. See, glycerol is a gluconeogenic precursor, alanine is a gluconeogenic precursor, lactate is a gluconeogenic precursor. All of them, they are not going into glucose here. So, because the reactions are reversed and that is why overall in fasting condition, chronic alcoholics will have hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia can be seen in chronic alcoholics. They will have get into frequent hypoglycemia. That is one of the laboratory signs that you can see. Now, if the alcoholic person, if they will take food like well, normally, you know, carbohydrate diet, if they are taken, so what will happen? What happens in the well fed condition? Alcoholism plus well fed condition. So, what we have seen, fasting condition, it gives rise to hypoglycemia. Whereas in well fed condition, what happens? So, if the person takes a lot of alcohol and also food during that time, so there is, if he has taken carbohydrate diet, so glucose is there. Glucose has to undergo glycolysis 
to make pyruvate but one of the reaction you need to note here when the glucose is going into pyruvate so if i write this reaction here so glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme in the glycolytic process there is an enzyme called glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase and that particular enzyme it needs nad plus and it generates nadh plus h plus now by this time you know what is the levels of nad plus in the cytoplasm of alcoholics all those nad plus are diverted into metabolizing metabolizing alcohol into acetal dehyde there will be very short less uh, NAD plus are available to run glycolysis to convert glucose into pyruvate especially through glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase that is why glycolysis slows down so that can lead to increase in glucose level especially under well fed condition and that can put a alcoholic person into hyperglycemia in fact hyperglycemia can be seen under well fed state especially because of lack of NAD plus now finally one of the effect of alcohol is interfering with the drug metabolism so that detoxification so alcohol is detoxified by cyp that is cytochrome p450 2e1 enzyme what if the similar enzymes are involved in drug detoxification process if the person is just taking alcohol once in a while and then take some consume some drug which is needing to cyp 2e1 so during that time so because methanol is metabolized in the microsomes also basically in the detoxification can go on in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum using cytochrome p450 around 10 to 20 percent of the alcohol will undergo such detoxification so during that time in if the person has taken a drug so the drug metabolism is put aside and alcohol metabolism is going on so that can give rise to increase in toxic effects of the drug so drug can go into toxic levels that happens in a person who takes once in a while alcohol not really a chronic alcoholic if the person is chronic alcoholic chronic alcoholics what happens there will be induction of these enzymes cyp2e1 enzymes are all induced means they have plenty of cyp2e1 if those people if they consume any medication which needs cytochrome p452 e1 isomers so it means already they have got plenty of enzymes so if, if they have taken a normal regular dosage which is given to the other person so it means it is immediately metabolized so it means drug levels can be below the therapeutic window so drug may not be effective at that particular dosage it means chronic alcoholics may need little higher doses than the normal person because there is already induction of enzymes so this is how alcohol can interfere with the drug metabolism depending on whether the person is chronic alcoholic or once in a while or occasional alcohol takes occasionally alcohol so we have plenty of metabolic effects here so let me quickly uh, brief you out what are the metabolic effects that we have seen with alcohol it's all about decrease in NAD plus and plenty of NADH plus H plus that's what is the ultimate effect of alcohol it is going to lower NAD plus both in the cytoplasm and also in the mitochondria and it will increase NADH plus H plus because of this change in the NAD over NADH plus ratio all the metabolic effects will go on so what are the metabolic effects you see metabolic acidosis and that's because of excess acetate ketone body that is ketoacidosis and excess lactate that is lactic acidosis all this can give rise to metabolic acidosis patient can have hyperlipidemia can have fatty steatosis and patients can like uh, alcoholic can have hyperuricemia giving rise to gout and they can have frequent hypoglycemia and if they take if they are in well fed state and take alcohol so they can be hyperglycemia also okay so these are all the toxic effects of alcohol i hope this video has helped you to understand all the toxic effects of alcohol and its interference in the metabolic pathways thanks for watching see you in my next video